Family, how many of you believe in here today that that worship, that prayer, that praise is, it's a frequency. Come on, somebody. I, I remember earlier this week, my six-year-old Princeton was, he was watching cartoon. And I remember in this episode of this cartoon that the lady began to sing. And if you, come on, we, we, we know cartoons that the glass of water was in front of the lady. And as she began to sing and, and as her, her voice began to elevate, come on somebody, it, it reached a certain frequency that it began to shatter the glass. And you know, that's, that's a cartoon episode, Princeton's laughing, but I'm a preacher and I'm a pastor. I, I, I caught the revelation and, and, and here's what I believe what the Holy Spirit was saying that that when your praise and when your prayer and when your worship hits a certain frequency, that there could be some things in your life that used to be a resistance to you, but now it's, it's, it has been broken by your praise. Come on, somebody. And as she began to sing and as she began to, she began to lift up her voice, the, the glass began to shatter. It reminded me, family, of Paul and Silas when they were in jail. It, it reminded me when things that I'm going through in my life, it, it reminded me that at midnight, come on, Marquise, when they begin to lift up their voice, this is why I love the scripture that says in Revelation that they overcame by the blood and the word of their testimony. If there any worshipers in here today that has a testimony, that has a story, that knows that it was the blood that overcame. So this is why we praise. This is why we worship. This is why we lift up our hands because we know where would we be without the blood of Jesus Christ in my life. Can somebody lift up their hands in here and begin to release a frequency that hits heaven? That there's are things that's being shattered in your life right now. There are things that are setting you free right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. So on Wednesday, we praise. Come on, somebody. On Friday, we praise at midnight in the darkest of your valley. Psalms 23 says, yea, yea, though I walk through, come on somebody, the valley. Praise your way through, but praise your way in. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you, we, we thank you for this moment of worship. As we're centered in your grace, even right now, there's nothing better than your presence. Your word says there's everything that we need is found in your, in your presence. The fullness is in your presence. The greater is in your presence. Joy is in your presence. Peace, comfort, gentleness, kindness, meekness. It's, it's all wrapped up in your presence. So disregard how we came in today. We leave out full because of your presence. We love you. We honor you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. Come on, can we put our hands together? Amen, amen, amen. Well, family, welcome, welcome, welcome to Celebration Church. My name is Pastor Anthony and, and family. Hey, maybe you're a first-time guest. Thank you so much for, for choosing to worship with us. Come on, home family. Can we put our hands together for all of our first-time guests? As we get ready to, to transition into our worship segment, first before we do that, come on, all of our C kids, our middle and high school students, come on, our, our lead leaders are right over there. You can begin to transition, but come on, are you ready for the word? Come on, uh, are you ready for the word? Come on, family. We we are in for a treat today. We have five, come on, not just one. We have five amazing communicators that's getting ready to embrace the stage. And I'm telling you, hey, can you do me a huge favor as we get ready to introduce them? Come on, can, can you shout them down today? Come on, can we be a church that prays? Can we shout them down? Can we cheer for them? I'm telling you, these are, these are five communicators. I, I love each and every one of them. I love their story. I love their background. I love the chapters that God is writing in their life. And I even love this moment as just the diversified of the community that's here. 
There's many voices that are going out, but today God is blending those voices and it's going to be one voice. And then we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. As they get ready to come on the stage, come on. We have Pastor Chris that's coming on. We have, we have Kenya. We have Julius. We have Sarah. And we have Osa. And, and as they know, guys, come on. This, we, we call this the five and five. So we have five communicators. And we, they have five minutes each. Come on, family. There's going to be a clock. And as you guys know, come on, anybody watch the Grammys or the Oscars? Come on. They, when it hits five minutes, I already told them we're not going to shut their mic off, but treat it like a commercial break. The band is wrapping you up. <laughs> but it's going to be amazing, family. I, I can't wait. I'm going to take so many notes. But as I say, let's, let's get ready to love on them. Let's get ready to cherish them. It's going to be a phen phenomenal message that they're getting ready to preach. Are you ready, family? Are you ready? Come on, family. Let's go, Pastor Chris. It is on you. Hey, church. There we go. Hey, church. Maybe did I, did not, I didn't have enough energy when I said hello. How's everybody doing this morning? All right, Keith, we're not going to start that clock just yet. I'm going to get situated here. I, I, I got to have time here. No, yeah. not. not. <laughs> All right, so how's everybody doing? Doing good? Feeling good? Family, family. So good to see everybody. All right, so uh, here's, here's, the, here's the, the take for today. Um, we're doing the theme of if my life were a movie, what would the title be? Uh, so I'm going to start it off uh, and tell you the title of, of my life Lifetime movie <laughs> would be uh, Beyond the Horizon. You got to say it like a theater voice, Beyond the Horizon. You know, I got to get that trailer voice in there. So what is, what is the horizon? What is the horizon? Well, everybody, I think we know this. The horizon is the line at which heaven appears to meet earth. It is the place where everything within your range of vision comes to an end, right there at the horizon. So I'm not going to give you, obviously, I'm not going to sum up my entire life story, but I will tell you a little story. Just over 10 years ago, um, I applied to a, a job at a church, uh, went through the whole interview process, and, uh, and actually, eventually, I, I got offered the job, but there, there was a catch to it. Um, at the time, I was living in Louisiana, but uh, the job was in Denver, and I didn't actually know whether or not I wanted the job. Um, I was that guy that likes to waste people's time. Um, so uh, I was still praying about it. Guys, I've been praying about it the whole time, weeks leading up to it, but I just didn't have any clarity. So I was just going through the steps just to see, God, are you going to show me something? And I, I just, I didn't hear anything. So was, now I'm at this place where they've offered me the job, and they're saying, hey, we need a decision by Monday. Great. Awesome. And so now I'm saying, God... I haven't heard anything from you. Has anybody ever been in that situation where you're like in the middle of making a big decision and you're praying and you just, you can't seem to get any direction? That's where I was. And I was saying, God, if, how about this? If I don't hear anything from you by Sunday evening, I'm just going to assume that that must be my decision is I'm going to, I'm going to stay where I'm at because I'm not going to, I'm not about to move without knowing that it's you. And so isn't it just like God? He likes to wait till that last midnight hour, that last moment. He likes to test the faith and uh, I'll never forget it. I remember I was, I was at church in the evening, Sunday evening, and suddenly uh, the pastor is on stage speaking. I didn't hear a word he said that evening because God spoke to me in that moment. And let me be clear. When, when I said that he spoke, I don't mean that I heard a, a thunderous voice from on high, like audibly. It was, it was, a, it was a, a series of thoughts, a train of thoughts that was led by a narrative, and that narrative was his voice. And his, and his voice said, Chris, do you remember that you had two friends? They moved away and they accepted the call of God in their life. And do you remember how you saw that I did great and powerful things in their life? Chris, do you remember the next time that you saw them? You didn't even recognize them. They were totally different, completely transformed. You know what? If you stay right where you are, Chris, You'll be just fine, and life will continue on as it always has. But if you say yes to the calling, and if you trust me, and you step out in faith in this move, then I'll do for you great works in your life the same as I did in theirs. Whoa, what? Are you kidding me? Okay, so now the question was no longer, what is the will of God for my life? The question is now, uh, Am I willing to leave everything behind to step in 
and make room for the calling of God that was ahead. There is a person that was in a similar situation, and I'm running out of time real fast. Uh, Genesis 12, there's a guy by the name of Abram, and he says this in verse 1 of, of, of the chapter. The Lord said to Abram, go from your land, your relatives, your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The moment that the Lord spoke to me, I immediately said yes. There was no question about it. Uh, it was an incredibly big decision, and I left everything behind. It was really challenging. But let, let me tell you, what, what God had for me ahead of me was so much greater. What he gave me was so much greater than what I gave him. What I left him, what I left behind, it didn't have any comparison. Let me tell you this. While I was there, God did great, powerful works in my life. God, he used me to be a blessing to others, but but there's this other little key to the story. Years, years before, while I was in Louisiana, I'd been praying for a desire, a huge desire in my heart. And guess what that was? I was lonely. I wanted a wife. And for years, I've been praying, and it, no one had ever come around. It's because she wasn't what, where, where, where the place I left. She was the place that God was sending me. I had to step away and let, be willing to let things go. Imagine if I hadn't, but I stepped into it and God said, here you go. Here's the blessing. Here's that thing you've been praying for your entire life. What are you willing to leave behind to step into the blessing for your life? Let me tell you, he did it for me. He did it for me, guys. He'll do it for you. Give God your yes and see what he does beyond the horizon. Amen. Come up after that. <laughs> after that. Come on, Chris. <laughs> so I'm Kenya Bryant. And so, you know, Pastor Anthony, you know, he likes to slide in your, in your text message. So watch that if you get a text message from Pastor Anthony. He don't slide in your DMs. He slides into your text. And so he asked, and so if my life were a movie, what would I title it? And immediately what came up was, love has the final say. Now it's interesting. I'm a walker, so here we go. So you think about love, and we think about a movie, and you think of that romantic comedy, right? And you think about, okay, so girl meets guy, girl and guy get married, girl has babies, I had three. But you never think about the love story that then speaks about girl and guy, Trouble comes, hmm. somebody else enters in, divorce happens. We don't think of that as a love story. But let me tell you where love came in. Forgiveness came in. Love is attached to forgiveness. So one of my favorite scriptures, right? It, it doesn't make sense when you think about the story when I think about my story and still put love in it. But my favorite scripture is 1 Corinthians 13, 7. And I like the Passion Translation. It says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best of others. Love never takes failure as defeat for it never gives up. So let me tell you, <laughs> in the Passion Translation, it also breaks down this little part and it's, you know, you know that little dot, dot, dot and you click it. I don't know if y'all clicked it, but in your Bible app, you could do that. Click it and drop it down. And this is what it says. Love bears all things, although commonly understood to mean that love can bear hardships of any kind. The normalized form of the verb is actually the word for roof, roof, found in Mark 2, 4. Paul is saying that love covers all things like a roof covers a house. Love does not focus on what is wrong, but will bear with the shortcomings of others and like a roof protects and shields. You could say that love springs, a, uh, springs no leak and is a safe place that offers shelter to no exposure. So 1 Peter 4 and 8 even says, above all, constantly echo God's intense love for one another, for love will be a canopy, a canopy over a multitude of sin. So when I thought about, okay, so my, my love story didn't come like the romantic comedy. But what I did find is that love never stops and it never fails and it has the final say. And so 
I always say, if you know me, that I want to leave a ceiling for my children so they don't start at the floor. So I started saying, okay, legacy is important to me. And instead of me thinking about legacy of the things I can attain, right? Could I not be worthy, wealthy in hope, in joy, and in love? Could we not have love be the legacy that you leave? See, I want to be famous for love. And love didn't want, you know, when you think about the world, the world didn't want me famous in love. Because I had this story. The story that looks in it hurts a little bit. I remember sitting sometimes at my, I have three gentle giants, and I call them that because they're 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, they fight for the, whoever sleeps the longest is the one who gets up the biggest. And then my daughter. And I would sit at these uh, graduations from little like middle school or elementary school. I'd sit at the performances and it would be all of us. And at the end would be my ex-husband and his wife, who, by the way, was his mistress when we were married. And I would sit there and say, God, okay, but what is the love story in this? What's the story in this? And let me tell you, the love story is forgiveness. The love story is that love has the fun. It's a blended mix. So when you see that love story, you see a blend of what love can do. So I want you to remember something. I want you to be famous in love. I want you to fight back when the enemy tells you that your story didn't get written the way that he that you thought, I want you to remind them, but my God, right? And, and what's interesting is today on prayer, comfort, if y'all know comfort, she could pray a house down, pray the planet down, pray, I mean, so she said, guess what you have inside of you, the DNA of Jesus. And who is Jesus? Love. So when the enemy thought he could take away love, my love story, he didn't know who I had inside of me. Oh, he didn't know who I was attached to. He didn't know my DNA had Jesus all over it, right? So then I got love all over it. So love cannot leave me. My final, my, my story is attached to the love that has the final say. So I wanted you to know this. His love is unfailing. It's better than life itself. There is no limit to Jesus' love in quality, quantity, or duration. Did you hear that? Quality, quantity, or duration. So let me tell you this. It's infinitely better than anything that the world could offer you. It was better than my marriage. Now that might scare some people because y'all married and I ain't trying to tell you <laughs> to divorce your spouse. That's not what I'm saying to get love. What I'm saying is that Jesus love. Ah, imagine if you sprinkled that all over your marriage. What if, what if you sprinkle that all over your kids? Because I got children right now that are teenagers and adults and they don't act like I want them to. And I don't sometimes see love. And I wonder sometimes, am I leaving a legacy of love? Oh, I'm going over. Sorry. And then so <laughs> I had my son tell me something. This is a testimony. After just some drama that we had, I was sitting in the car beside him and he said, Mama, I've never seen anybody love like you've loved. But I'm a divorcee, single mom three kids, but yet love shows up in my house. So real quick, I want to pray. God, would you make the people in these seats famous, famous in love? Would they take that on and say, I will be famous and I will leave a legacy of love. Remember that you're a legacy of love. Thank you. No, don't clap. I got to follow that. Man, are you serious? Don't start the clock yet, all right? All right. Uh, good morning, family. How's everybody doing? All right. So it, I got a fan out there. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So if my life were a movie, it would be called Back for the First Time. All right? Sounds kind of crazy, right? Um, so I need some crowd participation. Uh, anybody familiar with Ludacris, the rapper? Came out, came out with a song, right? You know, and I want to mm, head to your toe, right? Everybody remember that song, right? Raise your hand, crowd participation. Let us pray, because that's a shame. Y'all should know that song. Um, but he came out with this song, but in 1999, he came out with his own independent album, right? He did it by himself. He was encouraged, and he put his album out, and it didn't sell, not the way he wanted to, right? So he needed some help. All right, he wanted to become a new rapper. So what he did was in 2000, a year later, he released the album in which the song Fantasy came out. All y'all, we're going to pray afterwards, so you know. 
Um, he came out with this album it's called Back for the First Time. He reintroduced himself to the world as a rapper that he wanted everybody to know. He needed help, though. He needed that corporate help. Okay? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 just says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right? He wanted to be a new creature. I wanted to be a new creature. So at age 16, I had stepped up and I was like, I would surrender myself to the Lord. I want to be right. And I grew up in the church. So it was the right thing to do. And that didn't last long. Right? I was just like the parable of the sword, right? I was that seed that grew up fast and got burnt up fast. Promise you. I went to church the next week, and when I left, I felt the tug on me. And the Holy Spirit said, um, Julius, I'm going to stay in church. You go out there. You're doing too much like my soul is convicted. I was sinning, right? Sinning. Um, then I went to college. And in college, guess what? Played as a fraternity, played football, did some sinning. And I went to the military. The military is good. Did some sinning. And it's okay. War, battle. 2010, I got to a place where my sin caught up with me. Emotionally, physically, psychologically. Went to the store, got a bottle of sleeping pills. I went and got a bottle of liquor. And I took a couple pills, and I took a shot. And I took a couple pills, and I took a shot. So for clarity, let me, let me make this clear. I am a suicide attempt survivor. For those who are struggling and think it can't be you, I survive. Later on in life, my, my pastor from back home said, Julius, you're doing some sinning. You need to get your life right. And I knew my life was going to be better because God kept me alive for a certain reason. And I did. And things started to get better. And they started to get better. And then... A couple years ago, I found myself in this dark place again. Same feeling that I had when I was back in 2010. The difference was I wanted to become a new person, and I wanted to be a new creature. And that's what I did. This time, I turned to God. I did the right thing, right? I wanted to be the new creature. Now, I know that old part of me had to go. Now, I tried to keep the old Julius on life support just in case I needed to act crazy and I'm sinning and nothing crazy. I'm not, like, beating my wife. Uh, it's the other way around. I get beat up on. That's, that's, that's another message. And that's another message. Uh, but it's the small things, right? It's, it's the cuss words. It's the one extra drink, right? It's those type of things. And I wanted to become a new person. And I had to repent. Now, Webster says repentance is sincere regret or remorse. But true repentance means turning towards God and do away with the things that brings dishonor to him. And I had to surrender myself through repentance. And that's what I did. I surrendered myself. Now, I tell my boys, you know, daddy doesn't cry. I'm a man, right? Um, however, at six feet, 225 and a half pounds, depending on what day, um, I cried. I surrendered my life and I cried. I fell on my knees. I fell into the arms of my wife. And I surrendered myself to the Lord. I cried. I prayed. I worshiped. The sins that I've done before, Father, forgive me. Make me the new creature. Make me a new person. You said I am worthy. He has bought me through so much, and it was my chance to live the life that he promised. So, family, if you're in a situation to where you've stepped away from God, back for the first time. If you're in a situation where you haven't surrendered yourself, come back for the first time. If you need help and thinking suicide is the answer, it's not. It's not. Come back for the first time. Today is the day. Tomorrow was not promised. The ride home isn't promised. So if you're here and you're sitting in a seat and you're wondering, why me? You're supposed to be here for a reason. If you've came to God before and you've gone away, come back for the first time. I did. And God bless, bless everything that has my name in my church. God bless you, saints. Thank you. Woo. Damn. All right, all right. How do I follow that? Thanks, Julius. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Carter, and... 
First of all, Pastor Anthony raised a difficult challenge for me because, as many of you might know, I don't really watch a lot of movies, much less remember the titles or the actors. So I figured I'd keep this simple for both you and me, and if my life were a movie, the title would be one word, running. Uh, I'm also going to let you in on another secret, if me forgetting movies and actor names wasn't enough. And for those of you who are my friends, currently I thank you for continuing to be my friend even though you know this about me. For those of you who don't know me or we've just met, I will understand if we're no longer friends on Facebook or you don't hang around and talk to me afterwards. Um, but I like running a lot. And not just like I'm gonna go run to the store or I'm gonna go run a couple errands or I'm gonna run like a mile. Y'all, I've run at least two marathons, a couple of halves, some really long distance, so I'm that crazy person in your life. You're welcome. Um, there are tons of other different types of running, too. I mentioned running to the store, running some errands, running a business, running a household, running uh, a whole team. So there's lots of different running that I do. You're going to pick up this as a giant theme. There's not just types of running, though. There's directions of running, right? Like you're running towards something. In a marathon, you are running for that finish line and that free banana. <laughs> you are <laughs> with all your might. Um, but sometimes you're running away from things. I don't just mean like, you know, the 5-0. Um, but other things too you might be running away from. And hopefully you're running with something as well. So running, running is this theme. And as I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about this movie theme and the types of different running that I've done, I realized there's a persona in the Bible that we've all heard of who did a lot of running in his day as well. And that person is Gideon. He did two types of running that I'm not proud of, that I did in my younger Christian years as well. Gideon runs his mouth a lot. I think he's famous for saying, mm, pardon me, Lord more times than anyone in the Bible. And then he, then he continues to question and to ask for signs, like, God, you need to prove yourself right here, right now. Um, and then he also does a lot of running away. So grab your Bibles and head to Judges 6. And let me remind you a little bit about Gideon, who is one of the most unlikely leaders, unlikely people that we are to think of relates to our lives. So um, when we first meet Gideon, he is threshing wheat, not in a wheat threshing floor, y'all. He's in a wine press, hiding, not just from the Midianites, but as you'll pick up on, he's hiding from God, too, because when the angel of the Lord comes down and says, whoa, Gideon, you're this amazing warrior, he's like, you sure? <laughs> because I don't think so. Here I am hiding this wine press, and you, you're saying I'm a giant warrior? So Gideon, unlikely, he starts stalling and running his mouth. And Judges 6, 17 says, Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord says, praise the Lord. Okay, I'll wait until you return. I'll wait. I will wait on you. Now, as that angel sits there and waits under that tree, he must be thinking, this is Moses all over again. Because Moses did the same thing. Um, and y'all, if you're not familiar with like this era when Gideon's living, it's, there's no refrigerators or microwaves. As he runs away to prepare this offering, it's going to take him a minute. And he's literally running away. Um, so when I reflect on my life and the things that I ran away from, I ran away from God too. I did this same thing. There was a point in my life where I kicked God out and said, no, thank you. But wouldn't you know that in 2013, I was out for a run. Yes, I told you I'd like to run. I was out for a run, and I ran by an intersection I'd run through hundreds of times. And there was a church that I swear they built yesterday. <laughs> it was not there. And I was like, huh, isn't that interesting? I wonder what the times are. And I went over, and I looked. And the next Sunday, my butt was in that church, and it was Celebration Orange Park. So... Amazing. Celebration Orange Park is what got me started and what brought me here. And, you know, when we came back from Japan, here's Celebration DC. And it was just amazing. And I, I tell you, I started to realize that I needed to tie God to my running because he was tying himself to it without me even knowing it. Um, these days I try to run my mouth less. I'm actually, I think I might be the only person who's going to finish in their time. Yeah. 
Um, so I try to run my mouth less and try to figure out which direction I am running. Am I running towards? Am I running with? Am I running away? What am I running for? And it's always for God. So now I try to run my business for God. Now I try to run my household as God wants it. Now I try to run my whole life with God in mind. So let me ask you, church, when you think of the running you do in your life, are you running towards, away, or with? And as you set that example for your family, how are you leaving it for them? So, oh, I'm four minutes over, darn. Okay, four seconds over. Here you go, Usa. Thank you. (laughs) I'm going to follow the theme and be like, dang, how could I follow that? (laughs) But at the same time, um, first, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity and the assignment, as Pastor said, to be here before you and to share his word. Now, to follow the theme that we're going with, if my life was a movie, the title of my movie would be Great Value Gospel. Now, you hear that. Some of you guys are already turning your nose, crinkling your eyebrows, because y'all hear great value. Well, first, before I share that, I'm going to bring this back, but I'm wearing my Houston Texans jer- my Houston Rockets jersey with Akeem Olajuwon on the back, because once I heard I'd be up here, I was like, okay, starting five. I need to get ready. I need to be in my outfit. I need to be prepared. And Akeem Olajuwon is of great value to the game of basketball, which brings us back to our title. Now, Great value. Some of you guys heard off-brand when I said that, but God loves the off-brand. Some of you guys are using your Wegmans, your Whole Foods, your Target eyes and ears to hear what I'm saying, even though it's online. But for those that are using that, you got to understand God loves the off-brand. He uses the off-brand. He, I want to bring you to alignment to God's grocery store, Walmart. For those who love Walmart, can I hear an Amen. Amen. At least I got a couple of saved souls. Now, to get the rest of you guys there, I believe this truly, truly, truly. If you don't believe me, you'll find it in the word. So Matthew 4, 18, God calls his first disciple, whose name was Simon, which was changed to Peter, meaning the rock, the rock in which God would build his church. Now, Peter was a fisherman. Now, you mean to tell me that Jesus didn't pick a pastor, a priest, somebody who was already on brand? With saving souls, he picked a fisherman who he then told in verse 19 that he would be a fisher of men, saving souls. Built the rock in which the church was built upon. Now, we can keep going through that, and you can see there, we can rewind the track a little bit and go to Rahab in in Joshua 2, where we see that he used a streetwalker. So some of you guys say, of the streets in the streets. Well, we find somebody who was in the streets that was accessible to these spies that were sent by Joshua to make provide provision for them and confessed the Lord as the Savior that gave that land. Now, some people might not catch that because they don't understand that Rahab wasn't genuinely, originally someone who followed Christ, but she was of great value. Somebody who wasn't on brand, somebody who was out of there, somebody just like everybody here on these stands. We are not official pastors. I do not have the pastor title, but I will definitely let you know that God found great value in me to bring you this message. God found great value in you to hear this as well. Now, I'll transition it a little bit more. We'll talk about my life a little bit. So as a young man growing up to two immigrant parents, I might have lived a story that some of you have lived. And my parents said, you know, when we got into the grocery store, they said, don't touch nothing. Don't grab nothing. We ain't buying nothing. They said it with an accent, so you you can't get to any of these things. (laughs) But, But the thing about that, I knew I couldn't get the cinnamon toast crunch. I couldn't get the golden grams. But I might be able to get the cinnamon breaded pieces. I might have been able to get the golden squares. I might be able to get those great value things that can fulfill my needs and that can make it past that checkout line because it was accessible. You got to understand that oftentimes we look at these on-brand things. We look at these great, awesome things, but are they accessible? Can they reach God's people? Are they, are they at the price range that is, I mean, gas prices are crazy right now. 
you need that great value. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then at the same time, you also have to understand, I had to understand my parents worked really hard. They couldn't afford all the things, especially working all the time. So I put the things in the cart that would make it past the checkout line, that would work for me to feed me to get the job done. If you want to live a great value life, there's three things that you can do. When we look at Peter, when we look at Rahab, when we look at ourselves, we can lose the judgment. So all those crinkled eyes, all those Wegman shoppers, <laughs> you are finding repentance here. But second thing we can do, I'm going to look at my notes. I know them, though. We can lose the judgment. We can find the great value. Find the great value in those family members that aren't reading the Bible. Find the great value in your friends that aren't in the right places. Understand that God met Peter in Galilee in the mud, casting his net. We can be there, too. And the last thing is be Christ-like. Great value is not cinnamon toast crunch but a cinnamon toast crunch like I am not Jesus but I'm a Christian and I aim to be Christ like let yourself be Christ like too and be great value so I want to hear from everybody we are great value all right cool Next. <laughs> come on family can we put our hands together come on come on can we stand to our feet come on such a and amazing, amazing. Come on, I, I took some notes, family, uh, as we get ready to, uh, to go back into worship. But I, I love how Pastor Chris kicked it off. Come on, it's, it's time to go beyond the horizon. Come on, as we begin to hear, we hear their stories. But for each and every one of you, what's your, well, as I was taking notes, what's, what's my horizon for today? What, 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 what's, what does the next step? Hear, hear this today. Each and every one of us has a great horizon. Each and every one of us has a next step. What does, your, what does your next step look like? It doesn't matter if your next step is big. It doesn't matter if your next step is small. It just matters that you're taking your next step towards Jesus. I love how, how, uh, how Kenya kicked it off, being a father myself, and I love about the legacy of love. Come on, Kenya. Come on. This life can tell us to leave a whole lot of stuff in life, but the best thing that you can leave in life is Jesus to your family. And we understand that Jesus is love. So through all of these testimonies, I love how Julius, come on, it's time to reintroduce ourselves. I, I love the prodigal son story, that despite what his story looked like in one season, that his father gave him another opportunity, come on, to reintroduce yourself back to the family. The doors wasn't closed. Matter of fact, they threw a party. Come on. Amen. That's, that's God's love for each and every one of us in here. Now, he's always given us the opportunity, even in our worst conditions, to reintroduce ourselves back to the family. And I love how Sarah kicked it off. Come on, talking about running. I do not like running. <laughs> but it reminded me today asking a question and, and I'm gonna end it when we get to the end about responding to all of these stories, these titles. What's the direction that you're running in? Are you running towards God? Is your decision making running towards God? Is your financial decision making running towards God? The way that you plan, process, build, is it running towards God? And I love how our great brother Osa ended the message, the great value. The great value. Come on. Jesus, let's get ready to go back into worship. Hear this, family. Jesus is the name brand. That each and every one of us in here, that we, we find our value in him, but he has branded you. That you have been marked for a time like this. That you've been marked in your family to step out. You've been marked to leave love. You've been marked to run in the right direction. You've been marked. You've been marked through for the great horizon. You've been marked for a time like this. And when you are marked by Jesus, you are claimed by him. You are claimed for greater. You are claimed for the destiny. So as we end this moment, I want you to respond. As we get ready to go back into worship, how are you responding in this message? It's a great Sunday, but I, I just don't want it to feel as a playful Sunday. I want us to feel the urge to, okay, how am I responding? 
There's a word, there's a seed for each and every one of us in here and our online family as well. How am I responding to the story, the titles that they just shared? Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you. As we seal this moment of worship, of hearing your word, hearing these great titles, we understand that you have a title. We understand that your story, your love story is Jesus that we won't even be able to have a story if it wasn't for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And through that sacrifice, we are able to see new chapters after new chapters of walking in your grace and walking in your love. It's because of your love story that your love story goes to the deeper ends. Your love story climbs the mountain. Your love story breaks through the resistance. It's resilience. It keeps going after us. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are able to see a new story, a new chapter. And that love story is continuing today and we receive it on today. We honor you. We love you. It is in Jesus Christ. Come on, family. Can we get ready to go back into worship? Well, hey, family, let's, let's stay right here in this posture of worship with the bringing of our tithes and, and the giving of our offering. And here at Celebration Church, we have different ways that, that you and your family can definitely give. You can give through through the website, via the app. I, I also, I love the, the push to pay option as well. And as we always love to say, even for our online family, these ways are, are safe and secure just for you. I love this scripture found in Proverbs 3 family. It says, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns, somebody say barns. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I love this word from Solomon and we know Solomon is a man of wisdom. He, he knows a thing or two and I love that he's saying that with the possessions, the seed that God has given you, that we must honor that. That we must steward that, that when he gives us a seed, let us not live a life. I always love to say this. Let us not live a life with our, our palms closed, but rather with our palms open. That the more better that we steward the seeds that God has given us, I love that his promise said that, that we were living a life of overflow. That we're not just living from a posture that was inside of us, that we're able to live in a posture that was around us. That even when people come in contact, we're able to be a blessing because of the seed that God has given us. We didn't hold on to it. Come on, family. We released it down into the dirt so that it can grow up into a harvest. Amen. Let us pray over the offering, family. Heavenly Father, we lift up this offering towards you. And as each and every Sunday, we honor you with our first fruits, our offerings, our tithes. And as we honor you, we lift it up to you and we ask that only you can do what you do. Bless it, Lord God. We always say thank you so much for allowing Celebration Church to be a vehicle in your kingdom. We know the needs that's out in the world and we thank you for your orchestration that's happening even right now. Touch the lives that need to be touched. Multiply the areas that need to be touched and blessed, Lord God. We thank you for this move of the seed that you continue to give us. We honor it. We lift it up to you. Do what only you can do. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, family, I'm so excited. Come on, our church family. Anybody served at Serve Day yesterday? Come on. Can you make some noise? I'm super excited just to just to announce and celebrate just the generosity of our amazing church. I love that we're always willing to go outside of the four walls of being in a sanctuary, but actually go outside of the four walls and bless the community that's around us. The amazing projects that took place at, at Coppin' and Shelter. We even, come on, we even prayed around a, a school that we're in partner with and just believing for the seeds, come on family, that's been sowed around. Serve Day was, was amazing and we're just gonna continue to celebrate the work that God is doing in the midst of this church and also throughout the community. But hey, if you didn't get a chance to, to serve on yesterday, come on, how many of you know this is a summer of serving? And we're going to have another great opportunity for you and your family to join the party. Come on, don't have FOMO. Don't miss out. We're going to have another great opportunity 
as you, some of you guys may know, in January, we, we decided for each fifth Sunday of the month, we were dedicated to outreach. We were dedicated to going outside of the four walls of the church and actually going to the community. So for the fifth Sunday that's coming up here in July, come on, we won't be having church inside of these four walls. We're actually taking church outside to the community. So hey, you can, you and your family can go onto the website, click on groups and outreach. You can see Serve Sunday right there. Please sign up. I'm telling you, don't want to miss it. The seed that God has given you, maybe it's time, maybe it's talent, maybe it's treasure. How are you going to release it back to somebody else? In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, family, let me pray the benediction over you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon all of us. May he be gracious to us. May he always turn his face toward you this week and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, family, we love you guys so much. Have an incredible week. Come on, we will see you guys next Sunday. Have a great one, family.